um, is it is it wrong to to have sex with my wife during fasting? If sex and romance is is uh, I don't know what to put here, dear. Why don't uh, this last one? Well, let me answer the one that I could see, the one I cannot pick. Eh? You can see me after. Is it sex for someone? Is it right for someone to have sex with his wife? Right? During fasting. Hallelujah. Maybe during the 21 days fasting. Hallelujah. Why are you laughing? Sex is permitted. The only, the, sex is only permitted within the confines of marriage. That's why when you get involved in it without getting married, it's a big sin that carries serious risk. But when you sleep with someone that you are not married to, you are exposing yourself to demonic traffic. Demons. You get what I'm trying to say? But let's answer the question. Right. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians 7, starting from verse 1. We are going to read verses 1 to 5. You know, and... Let's read King James Version first. It says, Now concerning the things wherefore you read unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. You know, the King James scholars, they always like to dribble with words. What they are talking about here is sexual intercourse between a married man and a married woman. It says, Now concerning the things wherefore you wrote unto me, it is, not, is, it, it is, good, for, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Uh -huh. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Eh? And let every woman have her own husband. In other words, if you are not married, you should go on sexual holiday. But if you are married, part of your responsibility is to have sex with your spouse. Now, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. That's another mysterious word they are using. Now, give us message translation, please. Modern English. Message, the message, please. Aha. Uh -huh. The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality. The husband seeking to satisfy his wife, the wife seeking to satisfy her husband. Aha. Uh -huh. Verse 4 now. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your right. Marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out. So the moment you see I do, you become a slave to your partner. You have a duty to serve him or ah. Say you got the English. Uh -huh. Abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time. If both of you agree to it. Take note. Oh. That means once you get married, fasting is by consent of your partner. You know the marriage is yoke now. You can't even fast without getting the permission of your spouse. So abstaining from sex is permissible for a period of time. Just and even is for a period, not in eternity. Period of time. If you both agree to it, that means once there is no agreement, suspend your fasting. Take care of your spouse. She, I'm speaking truth this morning. These are things that create problem in marriage. The wife will say, I want to fast. The husband will say, I want to have sex. Ah! Shabby, you have one yesterday. I want to seek the face of God. You better seek the face of your husband first. Before you start seeking the face of God. Are we together? The moment consent is withdrawn, suspend your fasting, resume your marital obligation. After the sex, continue your fasting. Mm. That sounds nice or hard. I know some of you, you come from religious background where when you fast, you don't drink, even drink water. How many of you come from that background? Fasting means you don't drink water, you don't. That's why Africans don't live long. Because we don't understand the concept. You see, in fasting, you are not changing God with fasting. And you are not bribing God. Fasting puts you in a position where you'll be able to connect with God. So whether you fast or you do not fast, the hand of God is stretched forth towards you to bless you. 
God is a father. If my kids have to fast before I give them food at home, what kind of father I am? As a matter of fact, before they even say, Daddy, I'm hungry, food is available at home. They don't need my permission to go and eat. If your kids have, have to take permission from you before they go to the kitchen to eat, something is wrong with that relationship. But I know some of us will pass through some restrictions because of poverty environment where we are brought up. Do you understand? When I was growing up, for instance, you take meat once a day and the size is whip, not child. If you take more than one, my mom will punish you for the next one month you will not eat meat. And she will ensure that she increase the size she's serving your siblings. So that would you how how right? But that's poverty. I don't do that at home. Any of my children, they, if they lie, let them go and finish a pot of soup. We will cook another one. I could hear someone say that's in discipline. No, you know there are some poverty-induced discipline that parents impose. Is poverty induced now? Oh, what you seen there? At times growing up, I have had my mom grumbling, how do we balance up this month? How do we do this? By the time I deduct this, by the time... So, but when you go to people that are comfortable, they, there are some discipline you don't see in their family life. Do you understand? In, my, in our home, there is no regimented way of what you want to... Everybody eats what they want and what is available. And if it's not available, go and get it. At home, at times, my wife will say beans. That mukwe will say eba. And I will say, I don't even know what I want to eat. And after some five minutes, I'll say, okay, uh, I want to eat yam. So, we prepare three varieties of food. And at times, those who want to eat beans could change their mind and say, well, let me come over. We we'll cook more than enough. Do you understand? So, at times, the two of them can say, it's indomie they want. Don't add my own to it. They cook their indomie. And occasionally, the aroma will attract me. Let me take two spoons. There is no quarrel. Maybe in the process of taking two, two turns to 20, they will go and cook more. And, and they, because they have a carton at home. You see, it's when people want to manage scarcity that the regiment. Eh, we buy a crate of eggs. If you like, go and fry 20 eggs. But I always warn them, this thing you are eating will give you a challenges. Do you understand? Be moderate. But if you want to eat, well, a whole, a whole crate, go and cook it. Don't, don't move near my room because when you start giving us tear gas, do you understand? Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, so it, 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 it's like that. But some of us, we come from background when you fast, you don't drink water. No. Fasting is to put you in a position to receive from God. Fasting is not to make God to change his mind. His mind is already expressed in the Bible. But because of our lifestyle, right, lack of understanding and ignorance, the hand of God is stretched forth to us, but we are not reaching out unto him. So the first thing is fasting humbles you and humility draws man closer to God. Have you fasted before? And maybe at one or two, the, the hunger wire you. How do you look? I'm sure those who know you will say, this is not your normal self. Disaster to Shele. Kilo Wapo. Uh, they greet you. Uh -uh. That's humility. You are humble. That humility is what draws your spirit closer to God that you are able to. When you are hitting, you'll be running around God. You can't even hear God. Are we together? Then secondly, check the meaning of fasting in the, in the dictionary. Fasting means abstinence from food, not water. Are you hearing me? Huh? Abstinence from what? You can check it on your phone. I'm not saying there is. It's abstinence from. Why? Because water is necessary for both metabolic and anabolic activities of the human body. 70% of the weight of the human body is water. And when the level of water in your body starts reducing, you are damaging your body. That's why I encourage people during fasting, drink plenty of water. Because when there is no food, right, your body falls back on your fat deposit. Now, fat deposit, when it is broken down, will generate energy. But the waste product 
is poisonous to the human body. It needs quick evacuation. So if you don't want to damage your kidney, damage all those vital organs, make sure you drink water. Are we together? Particularly those of us that we, we operate in the tropics. Here temperature could be so high. Thank God for cool weather we are enjoying. But there are times when the weather is so hot and you are not drinking water. You are exposing yourself to serious danger. Look at Luke's gospel chapter 4. Huh? Luke's gospel chapter... Cha is it chapter 4 now? No, not chapter 4. Look, Luke's gospel chapter 4. Let's look at uh, va verse... Uh, uh, where the temptation of Jesus started, right? Or let's start from verse 1. Luke's gospel quickly and we round up this morning. Have you been blessed? Uh, I'm just giving us some background information, right? No, give us... okay. Let's start from verse, verse 1, please. Luke's gospel. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Uh -huh. Verse 2 now. I've been 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did, he did eat what? Huh? And when they were ended, he afterwards hunger. Now, the Bible says he did not eat anything, not that he did not drink water. I don't know how some people read their Bible. I mean, let's look at it. He did not eating and drinking are they the same? Huh? Is drinking not different from eating? He had 40 days, did not eat. Not that he did not drink. Because the God that created this body knows that without water, there will be a problem. And in any case, I don't know whether you've gone to that part of the world before, Dubai and all those places. The weather can be terribly hot. The time I went there for a training program, thank God I just put on t-shirt. One of my colleagues put on three-piece suit. Right? The airport, air condition everywhere. We step out of the airport like this. The temperature was close to 40. It was sweating like ice fish. And that's why there are taxi over there. Compulsorily, you want to operate a taxi. It must be, it must have air conditioner. And most of the taxis are Camry. Or this Camry muzzle. And if you know that, when it comes to AC, uh, that Camry is very good. Hallelujah. So, Jesus ate. Uh, sorry, Jesus did not eat, but he drank water. Secondly, the Bible says, after 40 days, he was hungry, not thirsty. So, where did you get your own principle of fasting that when you fast, you must not drink water? It's damaging to the human body. It's one reason why African ministers don't live long. What if I were bad, 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 bad. It's true. Of course, they will have the power. The power will flow. Do you understand? But they won't live long. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So first, realize fasting, you are not bribing God. Eh? What you want that you want to fast over. God already wants to give it to you. The willingness is there. The problem is you are not in a position to receive. You know I could stretch my hand towards you and say take. And you may not receive. So fasting puts you in a position where you receive. Are we together? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now let me round up with this. Right? We have read that message translation. Once you get married, you are in yoke. With your partner, you have responsibility. And if your partner made certain demands, you can't run away from it. And lack of understanding of this responsibility is part of what generates tension in marriage. Do you understand? Some men will say, Ah, no, you are my wife, you can't control me, you can't tell me. No, you are not married to an animal, you are married with a human being with brain that has need. So if your wife makes certain demands, you must, during the last the wedding we did here, a day before, because my wife knows the kind of man she's married to. Eh? I may just wake up that morning, I, I may, I, I won't put on t-shirt, but I could just come the way I like. A day before, she wrote a note to me. This is the kind of dress we should wear for the wedding. No, she will be the one to preach. So they will look at her longer than me that will doing the joining. So enlightened self-interest is there. So, but in case you feel otherwise, you are free.
to wear whatever you like. I still have the note. Huh? And now she went into the wardrobe and brought that heavy agbada. That material, if I put it on, is like wearing the whole armor of God. By nature, I like being free when I wear. That's why I don't enjoy wearing suit. I'm already sweating now. That's why I dropped that jacket. Do you understand? But I sat down. I've been saved. I've been delivered by Jesus. Jesus has paid the price. But my wife is imposing the body. So, <laughs> what does marriage say? I need to be sensitive to her. Okay, I will put it on. And the moment we finished the recessional hymn, I went up. I removed my coat of many colors. I dumped it somewhere. When you saw me, ah, Eti, you are bad. Do you understand? <laughs> Hallelujah. That is marriage. The clothes she put on was the type she desired. And she believed that if the two of us will appear the same, it is a wedding, it makes the whole thing to be okay. Do you understand? Hallelujah. It's yoke. When I was single, ah, Baba Lenico, this is what I'm telling you, I would wear what I like. Whether you like me or not, that's none of your head. There was a day I put on one dress like this to church. Christmas Day, everybody put on something new. I put on one faded adire. And I danced. In church, I just noticed my mom was not happy. When we got home, eh, and I was doing hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. Today is a great day. She was just looking at me. In the evening, I sat down and she came and said, Wale, what's your problem? I said, like how? I said, ha, wa so to to wa church. to wa. Oba, mi lo I said, Mommy, would you at what age? Eh? You still think I'm that baby that you you at times you say, Oh yeah, Pade Milaji can walk. No, I'm free to did I appear naked? He said, You appear more naked. I said, ah, ah. That, that cloth is not befitting. I said, Mommy, I've gone for youth call. You are not with me in Kano. Just leave me. You know. He said, You should have told me that you don't have money. I will have bought. At least, or could no way for Oh, look well. Why careless? But now, I care more. If I don't want trouble, that's what marriage does. So, the same thing is applicable to sex. If you choose to fast, do you understand? And your spouse say, My dear, sorry, oh, let's have fun. Eh? Compliance with God's obedience to God's commandment is that you suspend your fast immediately. Eh? have your fun then after that continue your fast we God answer your prayers in fact he will answer expressly hallelujah so that's just it 21 days right there is nothing wrong if you have sex in fasting because fasting is by consent even when we declare it here if your spouse says well there is nothing like fasting in this house does it overrule what I declare? It overrules it in your house. That's it. That's why don't go into marriage, just marry someone you don't share the same spiritual values. Huh? You know, a brother told me, he said, look, anytime I say I want to fast like this, hell will break loose at all. Because my wife will just be making, I said, well, uh, uh, you don't marry her. Eh? So, we are saying abounds, grace abound also. So be asking for great grace. Are we together? Hallelujah. I've seen people, women that, you know, they are fasting 40 days and the devil they are trying to drive away 40 days came visiting with another woman who doesn't even know how to fast, snatching their husband. Are we together? We should be wise as believers and go by what the scripture says. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh. I know some of you don't like my response. Eh? Whether you like it or not, rise up on your feet.